Tony Baker here with you again to remember Jano Starker's music making legacy. You might recall that last month I focused on what I called rare Starker recordings. I would like to continue on that theme this month. These recordings are either ones that Mr. Starker recorded only once or that are not usually thought of as being in the cello repertoire or both. I opened the video this month with one such composition, Go Pack from Sorokinsky Fair by Modest Muzorski. Mr. Starker made this recording in 1958 for EMI, and it is available in the Warner box set I told you about in September. Mr. Starker's partner on the recording was Gerald Moore. The next piece we will be listening to are excerpts from Voice in the Wilderness by Ernest Bloch. This was a recording Mr. Starker made circa 1970 with the Decca Record Company that was released on a London Records LP along with Bloch's Shalomo. On both compositions, Mr. Starker is playing with the Israel Philharmonic Orchestra, conducted by Zubin Mehta. In about 1985, these recordings were reissued on cassette, and circa 2000, Voice in the Wilderness was reissued on a DECA CD. Let's listen.
Last month I played the third movement of a composition written by David Baker titled Impressions. That recording was from a live performance and is not commercially available. What we are about to hear now in its entirety is another composition written by Baker and specifically composed for Mr. Starker and percussionist George Gaber called Singers of Songs, Weavers of Dreams. This recording was made commercially available and is a jazz suite for cello and 17 percussion instruments consisting of seven movements, each of which is named for a prominent jazz musician such as Rollins, Duke, or Dizzy. Mr. Starker and Gaber premiered this piece at Carnegie Hall on November 12, 1977, 39 years ago this month. The recording you are about to hear was the first made of this composition and was done in 1980 at the Indiana University Opera House and was released on LP by Laurel Records in 1981. It was coupled with a sonata for cello and piano that Baker wrote, which had been recorded by Mr. Starker and pianist Alan Planes circa 1974 or 75, and had been previously released on a Columbia LP. Mr. Starker's discography incorrectly states that the sonata was also recorded at IU in 1980. The two pieces were again coupled and reissued by Laurel on CD in 1994 and then again on a 2496 DAD in 2000 by Classic Records, courtesy of Laurel Records. One of the things Mr. Starker said about this recording was, quote, My friends are going to be amused to hear me play calypso, jazz, and all that bass stuff. End of quote. Happy listening!
The next piece we are going to listen to is the Fantasia for Cello and Orchestra by Ator Villalobos. This digital recording was made in August of 1988 in Brazil and was released on CD in 1989 by Delos. Mr. Starker is playing with the Pariba Symphony Orchestra under the direction of Elazar de Carvalho. Enjoy! <laughs> Thank you. 
I hope you learned something new about Mr. Starker's music-making legacy this month and found the selections interesting as well as enjoyable. The last piece we will listen to, Variations on a Theme by Paganini, are Mr. Starker's own transcription of variations composed by Hans Bottermund of violinist Niccolo Paganini's 24th Caprice for Violin. Bottermund was the principal cellist of the Berlin Philharmonic and later a professor at the University of Cologne. Mr. Starker was about 12 years old when he first came across Bottermund's variations. At that time, the young Starker made a penciled copy of the music and later prepared an edition containing the variations that he liked best. This recording was made in Japan in 1978 and was initially released on a Victor LP. In 1988, Delos reissued it on CD, and in 2004, Top Music International, courtesy of Delos, distributed an essay CD of the work. So until next month, let's have a listen. <laughs> Thank you. 